praise you, Lord, that every bit of our being would understand that you are truly the one that came, the one that did it all, the one that came to set us free, the one that came to reconcile us back to the Father. You were the one, the only one that could do it. And I thank you, Lord, that we praise you with all of our being. We praise you with all of our, our being, God. <laughs> Dance upon us, Lord. You said that you inhabit the praises of your people, God. You inhabit the praises of your people. You dance among us, God. I thank you, Lord, that you are just God supreme. Elohim, we glorify your name, God. We thank you, Jesus. Just give him a moment. Just give him a moment. Just worship the king this morning. We're not in a hurry. This is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. It's about worship. It's about praising the king. It's about bringing him honor and glory and praise this morning. <laughs> we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Glorious, glorious Father. Jesus. glorious, glorious Son, Holy Spirit. We thank you that you're just hovering this, this place in us and through us. I thank you, Lord, that you are filling this place inside and out, all of your tabernacles and even in this house. I thank you, Lord. <laughs> this is a house of God. This is a house of God right here, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are inhabiting the praises, that you are here among us, that you are here to dwelling with us, God, as we worship you this morning, God. Oh, sha-da-da-da-da. Praise his name. We praise the name. Yes, Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Sha-ra-ha-ba-ba. Jesus, you are the dividing line, God. You are the dividing line, I thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. Don't be in a hurry. Just worship, worship, worship. Oh, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. The one who was and is and is to come. Blessing and honor and glory and power. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Let this be a place of your dwelling. Let this be a house of prayer. Let this be a house of worship. Huh. Fill this place, God. Manifest your presence here in this place. Huh. Oh, holy one, holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. There's an atmosphere of heaven here. There's an atmosphere of heaven here. Can you feel it? It's all around. The Father. Huh. Holy Spirit in this place. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you have your way this morning. <laughs> have your way. Wreck our plans. <laughs> Wreck our plans. Wreck the plans of man if they're not in alignment with you, God. 
Let us come into full alignment with heaven. The sound, the resound. Everything you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, I was out in the hallway. And when I came in the room, there was a distinct difference in the temperature, like a di very distinct difference. And I thought it was interesting because I'm going to talk a little bit about atmospheres. And I thought it was interesting that God used something in the natural to support his spiritual. He sometimes does that just so that we kind of get it. Sometimes that's the only way we get it. The God who is spirit, he wants us to get it. He wants us to understand that there is nowhere that you can go, that he's not there. The God that is everywhere, all the time, in everything, and we think we're going to confine him with our thoughts and the way we think he should be, See, he sets the tone. <laughs> and sometimes we forget just to stop and yield to what he wants to do. Oh, Jesus, just give him a couple of minutes. We're not in a hurry. See, I'm really not in a hurry to give you a word. I'm more interested in getting the word to you that you're so filled supernaturally with the spirit. I, I, I am more interested in what the spirit is doing than what I want to do this morning. See, I can do nothing of myself. It's the spirit that works through me. That's why everyone can be qualified. <laughs> that should be good news to some of us anyway. I find that very amusing. Oh, Jesus. Help us to understand your ways, God. So simple, but so intricate. As simple as a child to understand, but yet somehow we just can't seem to fit God in our adult boxes. See, if I had a God that was like me, if I had a God that was, no offense, like any of y'all, You see, he's so much greater than that. I can't comprehend how he can know all the stars by name. I can't comprehend all the majesty of how he was able to create words, worlds with words. I can't comprehend that. But we should understand, see, that he did do it. So much about God that's so vast and so amazing that we should be totally blown away by the scriptures. We should be so blown away. I can't understand. How do you make an axe head float? Have you felt an axe head? I don't know. Some of you guys have been working on houses. The axe head might come into play or even a hammerhead. How does that float? That's Old Testament. That is not natural. When you throw something like that that has so much mass and matter, it should sink according to our 
thoughts according to our understanding, according to our laws of gravity and all of the things that we know in the natural. How did Jesus walk on water? Better yet, because we always like that saying of, oh, but that was Jesus. I call them the yes buts. <laughs> When I became a Christian, I heard a lot of yes buts. Like, why is this? Why, why, did, why did Jesus say, come, and Peter walked out on the water? What about that? Because I can say you can say yes, but that was Jesus. But what about Peter? Come on. Not even born again. Oh, and what did he walk on? Not just the water, but the word. Come. See, there's power in the word. The word is Christ, and the word is made manifest in a body. The word is made manifest. He came as the word. He was the word in the beginning, That's why speaking words are so important in the kingdom. Thoughts can become words. Holy, holy, holy. See, I heard good. Oh, Jesus. I think the last time I was up here, I had the little visitor. And God wants us to have childlike faith. I mean, sometimes we struggle, don't we? We struggle with faith because, I mean, to tell you what, again, if the scripture makes sense to you, if it's just not blowing your mind completely, I'm just wondering what you're reading because it's just like, oh, I do not know how that works other than you. So I'm thinking, I can't well it up. I can't faith it up. I can't just say it. I got to have Jesus. I got to have more Holy Spirit. I've decided, this is me. I've decided I need more of the Holy Spirit. And I think that the disciples kind of thought the same thing because they were filled and then they were persecuted after they did some miracle. And then they, they prayed, they prayed. That thing, you know, that we all say we need, but nobody seems to think that coming together for prayer is just kind of one of those secondary things. Maybe the worship could be good, you know. It's an invitation. Jesus, they prayed together. They glorified God. They, they brought about a recount of everything that is happening, everything that God has done. And then he says, take heed of their threatenings. In other words, we're, we're telling on you <laughs> to our big dad. And the place was shaken. Like, people weren't just rocking back and forth, you know, doing the, the Holy Ghost shake. Like, the house was shaken. This place, this foundation, this whole room, what would you do if it started to shake because of the prayers that went up to heaven? What? Come on. Don't just sit there thinking, oh, yeah. But that was Jesus. You know, it's just, come on. This happened. And it's kind of like, what? Why, why are we so casual in prayer? If we have prayers that can literally shake the heavens, Holy Spirit comes and boom, fills the place. And they go speaking because they went to a good service and got a good teaching. No, because they were filled with the Holy Ghost. He's holy. 
He's full of power. He's supernatural. He's not of this world. He is from the Father. The Father is spirit. He is spirit. Jesus, Lord, help us to get it. Sometimes I just get out beside myself. Really, I'm a very calm person. I go, Lord, I need to tone it down. You know, I just got to. It isn't. I find myself always raising my voice whenever I'm talking about Jesus. I get so intense and people are like, gosh, you are just intense. And I go, I am serious about Jesus. Like, I am serious because I'm like, why? You said it. It's truth. So what's wrong in the equation? God? Jesus? Holy Spirit, or maybe our stinking thinking. Probably that. Thank you, Bill. Phil. Bill and Phil. I heard you saying amen back there, Bill. Yeah. So I'm going to cool off a little bit. When I, when I walked in here, the atmosphere was totally different. It still is. It's totally different. Not just spiritually, but naturally, like I walked in and it was like very hot in here. And hot can be good and hot can be bad. Fire can be good or fire can be bad. We discussed that this morning in prayer. You know, I implore you. Is that a good word, implore? I say the invitation to pray. Just think of all things possible. What if we prayed the prayer that shook the house that sent the Holy Spirit? Would that be revival? Yes. Does it have to happen here? Can it happen anywhere? Yes. Yay, Jesus. You know, all of this stuff, all the change, all the things that God wants to do, even some of the things he wants to correct, he's going to start where? He's going to start with the house of God. As goes the church, so goes the world. What is the world looking like? That's not a rebuke. I'm here too. But if we don't ask the question and we don't ask God, what is it that we're missing? Then we won't get a solution. I love what Chris Valentin says. He says we're, we should be called solutionaries. Don't you love that term? I want to be a solutionary. Here comes Margaret, the solutionary. So many times this past week, I have just been over my head with responsibilities in a workload that I have no business doing. No business. I had people show up in my office saying, just hang in there, Margaret. Just hang in there. Don't, don't let it get you frustrated. Don't let it, you know, if you need to talk to anybody, I'm going, what are you? I understand the implications, but I'm just saying I am into some deep, deep water. And I go, Holy Spirit. I don't have the mathematics. I don't have the technology. I didn't go to school and study this. No, no condemnation on people that went to study. God loves people that study the same. But I didn't have that in my past. I am a graduate of high school. Papa, <laughs> papa, yeah. So, um, yeah, so a lot of the things that I wor learned was from the world in the, the world of hard knocks. But I don't have the education to think about these things and how, but I know he's given me skills. He's given me some skills. I've acquired them because I had to. <laughs> and I've actually learned to like them. So I said, Holy Spirit, you have the solution. You are the knower of all things. I do not have the mental capability to figure this out. And so he gave me some ideas, and I kind of went with them. 
And that's scary when you're dealing with CEOs of companies and you're bringing information that they don't, this is new to them, it's new to me. <laughs> and sometimes you're just going, I just want back on that wheel that doesn't rub any of the walls anymore, you know, just get me back in my comfort zone. Because I, I like knowing everything I know and being good at it. You know, the learning curve kind of stinks. <laughs> like starting a new career when you're in your 50s is not always fun. It's like, oh, gosh. <laughs> you, you know, you get to be humble and go, I just don't get to know. Like, I don't have time to go do a four years of learning. I don't have time to read a big, fat, thick book. You're just going to jump in, and you might look like an idiot, I've eaten a lot of crow, and I've learned to like the taste of my foot. Put foot in the mouth. But I said, Holy Spirit, I know that you know what it is we need to do, or at least help me so that I can help them. Because right now we need to have this, and there's really nobody else that is able to, with some of the information, help them. I, so... Yeah, so I rely so much on the Holy Spirit. It's like sink or swim. It's like, oh gosh, I'm either going down or we're going to go through the process. How many have gone through the process? Like, how many have gone through and come out on the other side? How many are going into a process? Like, it's cyclical. It's like you're, you're going in, you're in, you're coming out so that you can go in See, and then be in and then come out because we're going from what? Faith to faith and glory to glory. So what I learned, you know, five years ago is kind of embedded in me. And now I'm learning more things and I'm looking back and I'm going, wow, it's been a journey. And you know what? I'd love to stand here and say, I am just a bright, shining example. I did everything well. I didn't fail any tests. Yeah, it makes you nervous. We like to know everything. That's why we like to be in the, the systematic church. I'm going to just say it. Because we know what to expect. We know what time it's going to start. And we're going to start breaking some of those things down again. For the sake of time in this building, we're not able to do some things. And I know Holy Spirit has given us a lot of grace. He has. But I will tell you what, we are going to see and we are going to start seeing and we have already started to see again some supernatural things starting to occur. And they're not going to be the ways that we always thought that they would go. It's not going to be the old systems that are going to make it go. It's going to be total reliance. See, what we need is more Holy Spirit. If we spent more time in his presence... Who you hang around with is how you start building. I mean, if you're in the presence of God, when you are surrounded in the presence all the time or aware of his presence, who you hang around with has an effect on you. Yes. Atmospheres. Yes. Atmospheres. Remember last time I was up here, I don't know if all you guys were here, maybe you were, maybe you weren't, but we, I was talking to you, I started out about talking about Jesus's... Um, uh, chat with Nicodemus. Nicodemus. You know, I love how he's portrayed and chosen. He's just awesome. I mean, it, there are so many lovely things about that movie that I absolutely love. I will go no further than that, though. But Nicodemus, and he comes to Jesus, and, he, and he's talking to him, and he's asking him these questions. And just briefly, Jesus is like saying, you are the master of Israel. In other words, you are well studied. You're the teacher of teachers. Like you teach rabbis. Like you, you know all these things or should know all these things. Like you've got the doctorate hanging on your wall and you're going out preaching the stuff, you see. And now he comes to Jesus and he goes, hey, wait a minute. You're the master of Israel. Why do you not know these? things. If I can't talk to you about the natural things, then how are you going to understand spiritual? What was Jesus more interested in? 
Because everything in the kingdom comes by what? Faith. And faith is a tangible substance that you can work with in the spirit realm. There's something about faith. In Hebrews, it calls it a substance. Oh, we're going to go in deep. So, (laughs) I'm going to actually try and stay to my notes because I've got exciting things to share. Jesus wanted to get us focused on spiritual things. See, the kingdom of the world and the kingdom of God are different way different. Your first translation, because we don't talk about translations, we don't talk a lot about the spiritual. You know why? Because we may not understand it. The only way you're going to understand the spirit is to be in the spirit, to know the ways of the spirit, to have the mind of Christ, because that all wraps in. Do you understand what I'm saying? How do you have the mind of Christ? How do you have the mind of Christ? It says it, you believe it. You have the mind of Christ. Do we act like we have the mind of Christ? (laughs) You know, I know everybody's going, is she talking to me? Don't tell me. We should, because that's what it says. We should understand his ways because we spend time with him. Okay, it's 11-11. My phone just... up and I look down and it's 11 11. I know you guys are thinking she is totally off her rocker and and I am totally off my natural rocker. Um, yeah so 11 11 has obviously a lot of spiritual meanings. Y'all know the 11 11. I, I know I'm I know I'm preaching to people who know this but y'all out there 11 11 has a big significance to me and a lot of other people out there too. <clears throat> Yay. So I went through Nicodemus. Now here's, here's, here's my little segue. I'm going to call this, because you're going to love this, spiritual entanglement. <laughs> okay, just think about that for a second. I said, you know, I like to choose topics. Like one time I, choose, I chose a topic because I was doing a study on, on quietism and contemplative prayer. And I said, And I did this, and you guys were probably around when I did the new generation of mystics. Well, at the time, the mystical was never talked about in the church. Of course, this was at a conference where you can kind of go off the page, and it's okay, you know, because for whatever reason. But no, I decided to teach on the new generation of mystics. And I was warned by somebody saying, you know, you really got to use a lot of scripture on that. And I go, of course. It's the only way I know about The mystics is because it's all scriptural. The mysteries of God have been given to who? Us. To us to know the mysteries. I love it. So 1 Corinthians 2, 6, we'll start there. And I'll get a drink of water. 1 Corinthians 2.6. How be be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew, for, they, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared to them who love him. We've heard that scripture a lot. That stops there. But it continues on 10, and it says, But God hath revealed them unto us by his what? Spirit. So we want to stop there at 9, because we can believe that. I have not seen, and ear hath not heard. 
or entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for him. Because most of people can say, yep. But I like the big buts of God. He trumps the yes buts. And he says, but it is written, I have not seen, but God hath revealed them unto us. This is 10. By the Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Who searches these deep things of God? The Spirit. So what do you got to have? The Spirit. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world. Let me say that one more time. Can you say that again, Margaret? Absolutely. 18. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. How many people know what has been freely given to us by God, of God? We know by his word he's given us what? All things that pertain to life and godliness. (laughs) That pretty much sums up. If you had one scripture just to hang on to, that he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, you could pretty much do both. Live life and be godly. And he's given us all things. Oh, Jesus, I'm preaching now. Because I'm passionate about this. we got to change our mind. The more you hear something, the more it gets in you because it's the word. When you receive the word and it connects, or you just go, eh, nah, we do a lot of that. Maybe not. No, that's not what I'm seeing. Like I said, I call it the yes buts. We can yes but our way out of faith all the time. Like because we're not seeing it, we can just say yes, but, you know, you don't understand what I'm going through. Well, Jesus does, and he says, I have still given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. It's just your um, job to believe it or not. You have a choice. That's right. Lots of choices, huh, guys? You guys work with people on choices. Sometimes we make good choices, and sometimes we make bad choices. All right, shall I go on? To 12, I guess. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit, of, uh, the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given us to us of God, which things we, os- we, goodness, I'm getting tripped up, which things also we speak, not in the words which our man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Okay, so he's saying the natural man cannot receive the spiritual things. Because spiritual things have to be spiritually discerned. And how do you discern spiritual things? By the Spirit. It's pretty much there. So I'm just telling you, sometimes you just got to have somebody like me just say it, like read it to you. Like, I'm not teaching you guys anything you don't already know, but sometimes you just got to hear it. You just got to hear it. (laughs) Shoo, 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? We would love just to stop there. Who hath known the mind of the Lord that he could instruct him? I don't know. Do you go to, never mind, go to Jesus school? Yes. But we have the mind of Christ. You can underline that. 
in your Bible if you want to. I think you, we really, really, really need to get this. See, these are the words of God. This is not just a great teaching. But this is the word of God. And his, his words are spirit and life. They should make you go, hey, wait a minute. Something is different in my life. This is not happening to me right now. What is it that I need? Go ahead. Do the inventory. I already gave you the list. Is it God? No. Is it Jesus? No. Is it Holy Spirit? No. I can answer all those questions for you. Because they're not in any of those three. He's perfect. And he's given us everything. That should be good news. Good news. (laughs) We have the mind of Christ. Colossians 3.1. When I talk about spiritual entanglement, I'm going to get into some quantum physics. I learned this after I graduated and after I became a believer and after I started reading scripture and I kept going, wow, why is it that science seems to, you know, we always think that the opposite of religion is science or some, you know, oh, science is this way, but, you know, religion doesn't reconcile. No, 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 no. No, I'm going to show you a few things that I just go, that's so incredible. So I don't know how many times we hear this, and we hear Scripture so often that we forget we've got to get it in us. I need to get it in us. I need to get it in me. I need to get it in you. The way you do it, I'll, you guys know how to get faith. I'm going to talk about that later. But we're going to start with Colossians 3. I'm jumping way ahead. I'm excited. That's why. You know, (laughs) I'm one of those people that like to just talk about Jesus. I'm, I'm pretty boring that way. Like, I know there's a lot going on, and I've got a lot of issues I could talk about all day long. I could talk about things that I'm going through and things that I'm, think, you know, seeking the Lord on and things that in myself I just go, I just, I need to see something different. Like, things have got to change because I am not, I am not, um, oh, I don't know the word I want to use. I just know there's more, and I'm just not going to settle for yesterday or even today's manna. I want all that Jesus promised me because that gives him credit. If I were to give you a gift and you acted like you never had it and that I've never given you anything, that one might be a little upsetting to me. But if I were to give you a gift and you, and you were appreciative and you used that gift and you said, I know I have that gift. Hey, what, wait, you gave me that gift. And I'm not just talking gifts and callings. I'm talking about what he did for us and all the promises he said that we have and we're acting like we don't have them or better yet, we're crying out for things that we already have. One of the ministers that I have heard before, he says, he, uh, he said that like the child who has his banana and he goes, I want a banana. But children, they sometimes ask for things that they already have. <laughs> he says, I've given you all things. Oh, gosh. So Col- Colossians 3, 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on the things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. 3.5. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. You are risen with Christ, but mortify your members which are on the earth. Where is Christ seated? At the right hand of God. Where is God? He's in heaven. You're risen in Christ, but he's asking you to mortify 
the members which are upon the earth, and then he lists them, fornication and cleanliness, inordinate affection, evil conspicuousness and covetedness and idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God come on the children of disobedience. In, in the which he also walked some time when you lived in them. In other words, you used to walk that way. In those ways. See, again, your great translation was from one realm to another realm. How many of you, when you accepted Jesus and had your conversion, moved physically? It happened at that moment that you believed and confessed. It happened at that that you are literally translated, transported, taken out of the powers of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his son. You were, that's your first translation. Did you move? You moved in the spirit, but did you move in the natural? You are a new creature, a new creation. You are dead and now are alive in Christ. Did you die? But are you dead? Was there a difference? When you said yes, did you look the same? It's a spiritual reality. It is what really happened to you. You may have been wearing the same clothes. Did you change? Spiritually, you entered a whole nother realm. You better get that right because you're not living in that same realm anymore when you're in Christ. Christ is seated in heavenly places and you are now in him. We're going to continue saying that until we actually get it. I look, I, I, I dwell in these scriptures. I, because I, I, I gotta have more. I gotta have more. The world is going to collapse around us, and we're gonna watch it if we don't become the solutionaries that Jesus made us in to be. Oh God. Okay, that was that was a Margaretism. Okay, there's no condemnation in Christ. Alrighty, so we're gonna go on to Ephesians two one. I love throwing these out at you. I could, I could read Ephesians all the time. If I want to get picked up, like I'm going, I'm really having a really hard day. I just read Ephesians. It's just kind of like all those promises that are so great and vast, and you're just like, how can you even be disappointed? How can you even be discouraged? You know, it's just like a great pick-me-up. Anyway, it says that he hath... He says, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. We just kind of read that in Colossians, didn't we? Like he knows, you guys were in this, you were walking in this before you understood that you were um, now entering another realm of the kingdom. So you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the what? Air. Where is air? It's an atmosphere. It's, it's air that you breathe. It's air. Actually, air has to be present in order for what to happen? Sound. Sound is moved through the airways. It's moved through the airways by vibrations, by releasing a sound, and you have to have air. He's the prince of the air. What is traveling on the air? Sound. What is so important in the kingdom? The word. <laughs> when you emit a word, you're releasing sound into the air. What do you think it's doing to the prince of the air? Two things cannot occupy the same space. Hallelujah. 
come on. <laughs> Gee, willikers. It just blows my mind. It just does. Okay, so it says that the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among them who also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Conversation. It's a big deal. Our words matter to the point of death and life. It's critical. He talks about what you say so much. Why? Because Jesus is the word. He is the living word. So our conversations in times past, how many people have a different conversation? I might have not have ended. <laughs> I sometimes start a little bunny trail and then I abruptly stop it. But I'm kind of like that person that just likes to talk about Jesus a whole lot. Like that's my conversation. Before I was born again, I didn't talk about Jesus. You know why? Because I wasn't living in his kingdom. I wasn't aware. I might have thought that I was a Christian because I had gone to church a couple of times, got a Bible. I might have even said the prayer. I don't know if I believed it, though, until I actually had a conversion and an encounter in my car and everything changed after that. Your conversation changes. You can kind of tell what's going in a person by what they're talking about. You know, a sports advocate, somebody who follows sports all the time, he loves to get or she loves to get around people who follow sports. You kind of get this like-mindedness. I know nothing about sports. Nothing. Nada. I don't know who's playing, what teams they're on. Nothing. But I love to talk about Jesus. It's like you come to my desk, you come to my office, I like to talk about Jesus. When you call me up, when you sit and have coffee, I like to talk about Jesus. You know why? Because I need more of him. Because I don't see the things changing around this world, and it's my job. It's what I'm here for. It is not the job of the pastor. It's not the job of the apostle. It's not the job of the prophet. It's not the job of the evangelist. It's not the job of the teacher. It's our job. Know your assignment. Do it and do it well. We all have an assignment. It could be raising your family in a godly way. My goodness, we need families raised up in a godly way. We need these children taught the word of God. We need to get them on the right path so that they will not depart from it. Raise them up. What's the best way to raise up a child? You don't just teach them by your words. Your words matter, but you've got to work the word. That, that old saying, do as I say and not as I do, has got to go. We should be the influencers in our children's lives. We should be the one that says, walk this way. Walk this way. We should be teaching our children at home these things. It's our job. Because guess what? If you don't do your job, somebody else will. And that's what's happening. I'm preaching now. I've got two grandchildren that I am extremely um, protective of as far as I want them to know the word of God, the love of God, and to know right from wrong and what is truth and what is not. I don't want somebody else doing it for me. Amen. That was all out of conversation, by the way. So I'll go on to Ephesians 2, 4. But God, that big but again, who is rich in mercy. Aren't you glad he's rich in mercy? I know. If you, if you can't think of something to be thankful for, but God who is rich in mercy. I don't deserve anything. You know what I deserved? Hell. 
condemnation. I did. Because there's only one way to the Father, one way to life, and that is through the person Jesus, the Son of God, who came in the flesh, fully God, fully man. He was born of a virgin. He died, and then he rose again, and he lives today. These are the truth. These are the foundations. These cannot be altered. They cannot be fixed. They, there is no other way, any other way you come in as a thief or a robber. Let's just get that straight because there's a lot of that going on. This is a time for discernment, people. And how do you discern the spiritual things? These things have been going on in the spirit realm for a long time, and they're manifesting now in the natural. We got to teach people on the spiritual things. Huh. Because God is spirit. And he's rich in mercy. We'll get back on track. For his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together. I love that word quicken. It's like lightning. Quicken. Love it. How many people use that in their every day? I'm going to quicken. <laughs> I just think... <laughs> I'm going to try and work that into my vocabulary. <laughs> or how about quick enough? Yeah. <laughs> quickened us together with Christ. With Christ. He quickened us together with Christ. <laughs> By grace ye are saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that the, in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ. For by grace ye are saved through faith, faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. You can't study out faith. You can't. I did the, the whole workbook on faith, so now I've got it. You might. Believing is a really interesting thing, I'm finding. You know, you, how, how many, you could sit there and say, I think I believe. Don't I believe? Do I not believe? Do we believe? You're like, yeah, I believe in Jesus. Do we believe all the words of Jesus? I'm going, wait, wait, wait. I, I, I could share a scripture that would really wreck you guys, but it'll be for another teacher. Or I'll get really off it somewhere else. But For by grace you were saved through faith and not of yourselves. Like you could not do it. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We tend to boast, don't we? We tend to boast about how good we do, and we, that's why we have celebrations and trophies and certificates and certifications and, and, and great accolades for how much knowledge you know or how far you can run or what you could do and who's the prettiest and who's the most knowledgeable and who's the best at everything. Well, I've got the certificate on my wall. You know what? I've got a certificate on my wall that says Master Trainer. <laughs> it does. It says Master Trainer. Because I went to a course, and after I finished the course, I became a Master Trainer. They gave me a certificate that says that. Now, I do not work construction I can just train trainers. But doesn't that kind of sound like you're the master of all training? It's kind of like Jesus saying to Nicodemus, aren't you the master of Israel? Just because I have a certificate, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have, I mean, I don't go around boasting in that. But I'm the master trainer. Anyway, I think we love, I know people that just love competition. You know, I don't like to lose. Especially when, you know, it means something great is going to get lost. 
But I do like to collaborate. Like when we play games, it's a great way to see where people are at, like how much patience they have. And like I, I see people get really bent out to shape if they don't win. Then they start having a poo-poo party and stuff like that. It's like it's no fun. You know, it's about fun. It's about really having fun. Now, I say all this because it's just a segue. God does reward people. He does have rewards. I'm just saying you can't boast. You shouldn't boast. Boasting is usually not typically a good thing anyway. It's talking about you, you, you. I want to talk about me. Okay. Anyway, had to go there because everything's a song, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Jesus, we're just going to have some fun up here. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So you're in this room right now. You're sitting on chairs, I believe, that are made out of matter. So you're here, but what does Scripture say? That you are raised up together with Christ. Where's Christ? He's seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. We were made to sit together in heavenly places when we were quickened together with Christ and seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that the ages to come might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. See, John 17, 14 says, this is Jesus. He says, I have given them thy word. And the world hath hated him. It hath hated them because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shalt take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Are you in the world? We got to get it. There are things for us that are not in this world. They are in heavenly places where Christ is. We got to get our mind off of the things. He spends a lot of time. Keep your minds or your affections on things above. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformation comes in this world. Mind, this renewing of the mind, it starts in the mind because we're thinking we're actually here, but we're not here, we're there too. Because we need to keep our heads in the clouds. We need to keep our heads lifted up because the world hates you. It hates you. It's at enmity with God. That's why we have to mortify our members that are fleshly because sometimes there's a residual that's left by on what we're thinking that we got to slay in order to make sure that old man is completely dead and he doesn't get it back into us. How is faith received? It's produced by hearing a word. The word, the word that has to travel through air in order to hear. It's a vibration. The spirit hovered over the earth at the beginning and God spoke and there was a vibration and pow, let there be light. This was not the sun or moon. It was light, the light of the world, the word. In the beginning was the word. Everything starts with the Word. The word is alive and living. That's why when we get up here and teach, it's the word. You can receive it into a soil. You can receive it into good soil. This is not money. This is about honoring the word, the kingdom, the word of the kingdom. That's what's going to grow. The way you receive is the way you're going to produce. By faith. 
By faith, you receive the word. It says that Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence. It's evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. He didn't have scaffolding. He didn't have all of the, he took and said, it will be. The word is powerful. It does the work. How you receive the word is how you're going to produce what manifests. Through faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. In other words, he didn't take things and he goes, I'll just use this and I'll use this. No, he spoke them into existence. We really got to get that. I think we think we get that. But if you really got that, you'd be going, how does that happen? How do you, how, how? Do you ever ask Jesus questions like just say, what, how, why? There's a lot of that in scripture. It's just not, it's how you ask the question we learned from uh, from Zacchaeus and from Mary. How you ask the question. I just really want to know. I really want to know how this could possibly be. Like, I know it's true, but how can that be? Like, yeah, that's a big pill to swallow. Try being Mary. Blessed of God, highly favored. That's what highly favored and blessed looks like. Riding on a donkey, looking for that, you know, that Hilton in the sky. Come on in. We got the best room for you, highly and favored. Oh, Spirit of sarcasm. Crush it under my feet. Gotta go. All right. Come out. I'm still doing it. I'm sorry. (laughs) Okay, now we're going to get in some good stuff because it's like 15 minutes and I'm going to go for this. So how many of you know anything about quantum physics, quantum mechanics, string theory, yeah, that sounds good, doesn't it? It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> you know, there are just some things that you can't explain in the natural. Obviously, Jesus was saying that to Nicodemus because he's like, how can I even get into this, you know, the spiritual things, if I can't even talk to you about the natural things. The writers of Hebrews had the same thing. How can I talk to you about the meat of the word when you're still on the milk of the word? This is all traipsed throughout the New Testament. There was just a real problem with people becoming dull of hearing, dull of hearing, dull of hearing. Hearing the what? Hearing the word. The word is live and living. The word carries the power to impact and change everything that happens. How are you saved? You are saved by faith, by hearing the word of God, receiving the word. The word. (laughs) Okay, but what is the word? (laughs) The word is sent upon a wave and it is heard. (laughs) David Vancouverin, I talked to you guys about him the last time I spoke, and he calls it popping a quiff. You hear the word, it's received by faith, and something manifests. It becomes no longer a wave, but once it's realized, observed by faith, it becomes a particle, which is actually a substance. Are, are you getting this? I love this. This, this physis, the physicist, that's a hard one. Does everybody say physicist? Physicist. 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 I looked this up because I wanted a really good terminology for popping a quiff. The reason being that it is a terminology that is used in that, you know, quantum. Quantum is unseen particle reality. It's everything around us that we cannot see, but it's real. 
because everything is made up by quantum particles, by everything that comes together. It's just what everything is held together with. Uh, so anyway, he, David Vancouvering did this great teaching when I did um, a, uh, a uh, seven year, or seven years, seven years, that's a long time, seven day intensive with Ray Hughes. And um, he came in and did a special little thing on mass having memory. I loved that so much. You know, I was pretty new in the Lord, and I was just like this big sponge. I know nothing about quantum physics, nothing. I know nothing about science. I wasn't real, I was not a straight A student. I barely passed. I actually just got through. And um, and I'm thinking, I am just so mesmerized by what he's teaching about. He's talking about frequencies. He's talking about waveform. He's talking about particle. He's talking about how waves collapse. And that's called popping a quiff. And, but he's a spiritual man. He actually um, helped invent the synthesizer. And um, so he's, he's since passed on to glory. But he had some great, great teachings, all uh, in a physics realm. I did a lot of this teaching after I heard from him and, and did a lot of research on my own and did some of the stuff about sound and how it travels and how it changes atmospheres and all of these things. You guys were probably there when we did the, um, the sound, how it affects sand. And when you change the tones and the frequencies, the shapes change because sound has an impact on matter. What you say has an impact on physical things. It's a natural reality of a physical truth or it's of a spiritual truth. I'm getting way ahead of myself because I'm so excited about this. Anyway, it says, uh, Fred Allen Wolf, who's a physicist, uses the term popping a quiff. Now, this is something that is out of quantum physics. It's for quantum wave function. To describe the role of the observer in cr uh, creating reality. Before being consciously observed, quanta, the building blocks of all matter, exists only as a boundaryless wave of undifferentiated quantum energy. In other words, once it's observed, once it's recognized, once the word is received, it collapses, pops a quiff, and now by faith, it becomes something. That those things that are not seen have become things that are seen. Everything you see around us started with something. It started with a, a thought. It started with something. It started with a word. The realm we are most aware of or focused on is the realm that we will make manifest. That is why it's so important for us to mortify our earthly so that we can be more spiritual. That's kind of not a, you know, they're just so spiritual. Don't we just use that in a bad connotation? They're just so, they're just ultra spiritual. Well, take it up with God because he's spirit. Like, he's all spirit. Like, there's nothing that's natural about him. He is all spirit, and he has given us the spirit, the very same spirit. So quantum entanglement is, I, I'm going to read this. I thought this was a cute little rendition of what. I think these guys can say it a little bit better than I can because, like I said, I'm not a physicist. I'm a high school graduate. That I go, when I read these kinds of things and I see scripture, I'm going, they are literally understanding kingdom principles and writing about it. Quantum entanglement is one of the uber bizarre phenomenons. I just love the way they say that. Seen when things get itty bitty or inside the quantum realm, when two or more particles link up in a certain way, no matter how far apart they are in space, their states remain linked. That means they, are, they share a common unified quantum state. So observations of one of the particles can automatically provide information about the other entangled particle, regardless of the distance between them. And any action to one of these particles will invariably impact the others in the entangled system. Do you understand what I'm saying here? You're here, but you're there. 
You're like bilocated. You are earth on, you are heaven on earth and earth in heaven. You're entangled with the spirit. In other words, everything that we do here has a spiritual connotation. Every, if we keep our mind on things above, if we are working in the spirit, we are entangled in the spirit has that, that reaction here. Is that interesting to you guys at all? Or does that just it's like, I just go, wow, that's science proving that we can be in two places at once. Like, doesn't matter how far apart, they can be totally influenced. Bind those things that are on the earth. They shall be bound in heaven. I mean, what? Really? I love this. On earth as it is in heaven, right? Kind of it's like if it's going on there, it needs to be going on here. What are you entangled with? Are we still entangled with our earthly? Are we still, we got to cut that off? We've got to keep, keep focused. The humdrum Life is just dull. All of those things. I'm telling you what, we can get wrapped up in it. I sometimes just got to stop myself and go, what are you thinking? The best way to gauge that is kind of look around and go, why do I feel this way? Why is this happening? I do not need to have stinking thinking and a bad attitude. Do you know what? It's a choice. You didn't give me a bad attitude. Phil didn't make me this way. Phil didn't make me mad. Phil didn't do it. Nobody did it to me. I chose to let that have power and influence on me. And now I'm responding or reacting to it. And I have the choice. See, I can decide to have a really bad day. But what am I entangling with? The world calls it, what do they call that? They call it um, law of attraction. Who are you inviting to your party? Because what you decide to do, dwell on and dwell in is what you're entangling yourself into. That's why he made a point mortifying. Kill it. Make it dead. It's your choice. In other words, you've got to be conscientious and humble enough to say, yeah, I am the righteousness of God. But when you're not acting righteousness, own it. Get rid of it. Stomp out that sarcasm. It isn't fruitful. What is actually manifesting in your life? I've had to do that a couple times, guys. You actually, I, I saw your post on Facebook and I'm going, oh my, she is preaching the word that I'm going to share because I will tell you what, and I'm not going to finish my, because I'm just going to wrap it up with some of this. You have a choice. You have a choice what you're going to get entangled with. It is really as natural and spiritual. See, the spirit realm will impact the natural realm. It will. When I walked into this room and this whole area was warm, and I'm going, I wonder, I'm wondering what the thermostat is set at. I wonder what the temperature is. Those are two different functions of something. Because a thermometer measures, doesn't it? It'll tell you how hot things are. And we can go in here and we can go, man, it's hot. It is hot. Somebody get some, someone, I mean, really, we need to get some air. Uh, it's hot. I could tell you guys it's hot, but what does a thermostat do? It sets that temperature. It controls the temperature. And we need to be a thermostat, not a thermometer. We under, we've got to understand that those things that we cannot see are more real than what we can because those things that are unseen are what eternal eternal that chair eventually is going to collapse and and get corroded and all of these things because it, it is in a corrupt everything is is corroding away in this atmosphere because in this air is the power of the prince of the air 
But when we speak the word, we are setting the gauge of a spiritual realm because we have been taught about, oh, I'm having a bad day. Oh, I've got a bad marriage. Oh, my kids didn't listen to me today. And we can preach to that all the time. And that's good. Get yourself in that. But if we can get the grasp of the spirit, then we're going to be able to change things. You can read a good book. You can get some help all of those things, but you need the Spirit. I cannot do this on my own. Maybe you got to cry out to God. Maybe you got to yell and say, I need more, God, because this is not working for me. My household needs to be a household of God. My family, we want to worship you. This, these are critical. We are changing atmospheres right here just because we don't see. As I'm releasing anything that has the word of the Spirit, I am bringing life in this place whether you see it or not. And if it's received by faith, it pops a quiff and you end up walking in and manifesting the things that were given to you by the word. Wow, that's why our spiritual soil is so important. So, This was something that you had posted, and it was talking about having kind of one of those anxious days. Anybody had an anxious day? (laughs) Sometimes anxiousness comes in the forms of like, what am I going to do if that happens? What am I going to do next? What happened? It's all, you know, anxiousness and worry. It's kind of like that thing that hamsters ride on. It's like thinking about things that haven't happened. Sometimes you can think about something so many times, you know, it's just like it wears you out. It wears you out. Anxiousness causes stress. You overanalyze, overanalyze, overprocess because we want to make sure that we stay comfortable. We want to know we got it all together. We look good. We smell good. I got it all together. I'm fine. You're fine. Everybody's fine. Let's have a fine party. We need more of the Holy Spirit. The one that changes us. The one that was promised to us. The very Spirit of God. Even Jesus received the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He had the Spirit. The Spirit led him where? Into the wilderness. Sometimes we go into the wilderness with the Spirit, but I am telling you what, it is the Spirit that we need. And I'm telling you, prayer, let the house be shaken. Pray for it in your secret place. Pray for it here. I mean, I may look like an idiot, but I want more. How many want more? I want more, and I know that if I ask, I will receive it. And I am asking, Lord, we need more because our Our world needs you. Our world needs you. Our family needs you. Our nation needs you. They are waiting for us, the spirit to come, the the sons to arise, to, to rise up in this hour full of the spirit, led by the spirit. We've got to get more spiritual so that we can have a natural impact. We need to learn to pop a quiff and get those things in the spirit realm into the particle realm that way form to collapse into reality that we can see and call those things that are not as though they are and let the kingdom come your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven let us be in those by locations let us be spiritually entangled let us mortify our flesh God I thank you God that we step into realms we step into atmospheres we are atmosphere creators because we carry a realm of peace we carry carry the realm of righteousness. We carry a realm of joy because those are all in the kingdom. Righteousness, peace, and joy. We should be the most happy people on earth. Hey. And that's my prayer for you guys this morning. It's my prayer for me. How many are satisfied with the way things are? We can no longer be the wheel inside that 
that place anymore, just spinning and spinning and spinning. Maybe some of us need to be ground down a little bit more. Maybe some of us, and that's okay. Let the process happen so that we can get on with this. He, he is not looking for pedigree. Let me just tell you. He, he made that very clear in the New Testament. I mean, you had to have pedigree if you were going to come before him in the Old Testament. You had to have the lineage. You had to have the garments. You had to have it all done all the way it was told and prescribed. He was looking for pedigree, but no longer. Now he's looking for the fisherman. He's looking for the prostitute. He's looking for anybody that will say yes by faith and receive his word. No longer do you qualify by what you do. He qualifies you for who he is. And all you have to do is believe. Do we believe God? Do we believe him? That the same things that Christ did, we're supposed to be doing right now. I'm preaching to myself. I need this word. This word is working in me. I can no longer be satisfied with these things. I am not ready to just say, well, the world's got to come get worse. There's a lot of good things happening. Just because you're not hearing about it, there's a lot of good things happening. And if you're not hearing about it, let's start creating some good things that are happening. <laughs> Testimonies. Good things are happening. We had healings happening. Come on. Testimonies are speaking the word of what God has done. This is something that the Jewish culture has understood is to continue to speak out the words because faith comes by hearing the word of God. It's in the word. It's there. It's available. Believing it. Make it manifest. It's physics. It's all quantum. That is a real reality. It's there. How did Jesus walk on water? Because he defied our natural laws. And on his word, come, was enough for Peter to believe, just tell me to come, Lord, and I'll come. And he walked on the word. Come. Isn't that amazing? It's like you can't really think that out, like the reconciliation of how that all works. I'm just telling you, it has to be received by faith. That's the reason why it's so critical that we understand how, chi how children are and how they behave. I'm, you know, I'm getting such an education from my um, granddaughters because my kids grew up way too fast. I grew up way too fast. So I just, I have to sometimes take it down a couple notches so that I don't get so intense that I don't forget to just believe like a child. Honestly, they just trust. Like they come into this world trusting until they're given a reason not to. And I think sometimes we've just been disappointed so many times that we just forget that the word of God stands true no matter what. And that is why I can praise him and know that he alone will get this all sorted out in me, in my life if I seek him. I just want to pour out so much more of myself. If there's anything that's within me, I try and take not an introversion look and, you know, introspective, but I do take an inventory of like, why am I feeling this way? Because there's more invited to the, there's more in the party realm. It's who you invite. If you want to have a poo-poo party, there's lots of, spirits that'll come and join you and they'll even bring the balloons and the cake. Yeah. It's true. You set the tone. You can have a happy day. Sometimes, maybe sometimes you just got to get up and say, I just love you, God. I, sometimes I have to do that. Like on my way to work, sometimes I'll just laugh in my car. There's something about a good belly laugh that the enemy just cannot stand. Like, it's just joy. It's like, I don't feel like laughing right now. 
But when I start laughing, I just start going, oh gosh, this is so much better than how I felt. Did it change my situation? No. But I feel better because I don't have to be caught up and entangled in that situation. And when you start going down that slippery slope and then they start pulling you in, those, yeah, it gets harder and harder to get back. You've got to gird up your loins. You've got to put on God. You've got to do whatever it takes to say, you can't stay this way. If you don't want to, you've got to choose. Sometimes you just got to say it. Sometimes you just got to, like, acknowledge it. We have some of this kind of open in our household. It's like, you know, that's, you're sounding kind of like a little, are you having a bad, how many people, are you having a bad day? Well, what would make you think that? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Are you having a bad day? (laughs) Might be some cues. Your face might be giving you away. It's okay. But you can choose not to participate and throw the party of joy, which is in the kingdom, even when you don't feel like it. And I'll tell you what, it does some great things. Put on some worship music, change the atmosphere, get some help, do whatever it takes to get it into you so that you can move on and start stepping into all the promises that God has given us, the all things, life and life abundantly. Kill, steal, and destroy, life, life abundantly, you choose. They're both wanting to come to your party. What kind of party are you throwing? They both have influence. What are you going to allow to influence you? What you decide attracts those things. Keep your mind on things above. It takes a conscientious action. It actually means to exercise your mind. Exercise means you've got to build it up. So sometimes you got to stop in your tracks and go, what am I thinking about? Stinking thinking. What am I thinking about? Why am I thinking about this? What is going on? Why do I feel this way? Because sometimes the things that we think about start becoming the way we feel, and then the way we feel start attracting other things, and then we start actually going, see? It's really happening. Because they brought things to the party Am I, pr- yeah, this, this is not natural stuff. This is not your, your, your book on how to make a great life. It is all spiritually discerned. Can you see how this is spiritually discerned? Choice is amazing. It started in the garden. What you do when you think nobody's around is really who you are. What you do when there's no one around is really who you are. I've used this analogy before, and I'm going to use this again. It's when a couple came over to their friend's house, and they go, oh, you got, you got a dog. Oh, yeah, we've had it for years and years, and they, it's a muzzled dog. They go, well, does your dog bite? No, never bit anybody, never bit anybody. But he forgot to tell them that he's been muzzled since they bought him. And what happens when you take the muzzle off? What happens when you're giving free will? What happens when you are unrestrained? What happens when you are not told what to do, but you get to choose what you're going to do? That's who you are. And that's who we're dealing with. And when we see the things manifest from our choices because we're no longer told what to do by the law, we get to choose because the law's in our heart. That's what we're manifesting. That's how close of a relationship we have with the nature of our Father. Because we're supposed to have the nature of the name, the name and character of our Father who is in heaven. We should be able to see, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's what Jesus went around saying. 
And he said, and I do these things and greater things. What a great honor that is. Okay. Just want to know, anybody doing the greater things? I am not doing the greater things. I want to. How many, better question, who wants to do the greater things? (sighs) Jesus, I want to do the greater things, and I want to do them because you gave us the ability to do them. You sent your spirit. You sent your spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. Lord, we are going to learn from the Spirit. We're going to be trained by the Spirit. We're going to understand your ways. We're going to understand the things that you do. We're going to have spiritual discernment. We're going to understand what the Spirit realm is doing, what it is saying, and we're going to learn to set the atmosphere. We're going to learn to be spiritual um, just thermostats that we are going to be able to enter in rooms, understand what is occupying that space and come and turn it around just because of who we have in us because greater is the one who is in us than the one who is in the world. We have the ability to release the word of life because the life is Jesus. The life is the word. And I thank you, Lord, that we can change atmospheres, those things that are occupied by the prince of the power of the air. I thank you, Lord, that we are releasing now, even now, life. And I thank you, God, for those that have an ear to hear, let them hear, because it is in the hearing and the receiving that it becomes manifest, and we have the ability to walk out by faith what we believe. Let it become manifest in our life that we would see your kingdom come, your will be done. Let us pop the quiff that brings that reality right here into our present time, God. The world is waiting for us. The world is waiting for us to mature and become sons, to understand what it is to walk and be led by the Spirit, not just on Sunday, but on every day. Let it be so according to your word in this place, in our lives, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, thank you guys all. I just hope that you dwell Take time just to dwell on on a scripture. Let it get in you. Take the most ridiculous, outrageous scripture that you do the head tilt to, that you're like, say what? Like, you know, for those that believe, they will lay hands on the sick and they will shall recover. We can start on that one. For them that believe. For them that believe. That's one of those that I go, do I believe? So I dwell on that a lot. Take a scripture, ask the Lord. He's got all the answers. He's got all the answers. He'll lead you into all truth. He will show you all things that you need. Just got to ask him. You got to dwell with him. Got to spend some time with him. You can learn a lot of things in the natural, but the natural man cannot discern the things of the spirit. As a matter of fact, they think it is foolish. You're so spiritually minded, you're of no earthly good. I'm going to keep my heads in the cloud. I'm going to keep it up there. I, I, I know what goes on in the world. We get it spoon fed to us, whether it's true or not, I don't care. All I know is that we are meant to change that. We are left in the world. Jesus said, I'm not wanting you to take them out. I just want you to keep them from the evil one. Just keep them from evil. Keep them in the world because I was of this world and I say go. Go into the world. Where is your world? It's all around you. Your world is all around you. When you're going, you're going with the kingdom. You can decide if that world's going to be when you get up and out of the seat or you can say it's only if I go to the nations on a mission trip. It all depends on you. My go is when I get up in the morning and I get up. Where am I going? What am I doing? Where's my current assignment? Where, and when that assignment changes, I just go. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Do we need to move? Well, ask. Do we need to move? Go, get up and move. Do you need to go to this? Get up. Maybe sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes it's yes. Just be obedient. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I think. I'm done, but I'm not done. Anyway. 
I love you guys. I'll just pray a short prayer. I thank you, Lord. (sighs) What an honor and a privilege, Lord, to be able to represent you. I thank you, Lord, that we are going to see some amazing manifestations of your spirit in this place. I thank you, Lord, that you're looking for willing vessels that can be filled with even more. I thank you, Lord, that the cry of our heart would be to have more of you, God, more of you, Holy Spirit. The thing and the, and the things that we get our, tied, our things tied up with, the things of this world would be cast down and mortified. Lord, that we would open ourselves to expand into more of your kingdom, more of your understanding, more of your word, God. we got to have more of you, Lord. That's what the world needs. So I thank you this morning that these words hopefully found good soil to rest upon and germinate and be nurtured into a full manifestation. Lord, that we would walk things out, that the world would see and know that we have been with Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that we would see signs and wonders in our city, that we would see the sick healed, that the lame would walk and the deaf would hear and the blind eyes would be open and the dead would be raised and lepers would be cleansed by your word that washes us clean as snow, just wider, deeper and higher as your is your understanding than our ways, God. And I just thank you, Lord, that you expand our faith, you expand our grid to receive. Lord, that we are changed all the time. We're ever changing, ever advancing. We're never staying the same, God. We want to, by choice, step in to what you have for us. We choose today. Just make that personal commitment to choose today to walk in your ways, to walk in your realities, to walk in heavenly realms, to walk with the understanding of the Spirit, to walk in the mysteries of God, to walk in the understanding of who you are, who we are, where we are, where we're located, what can happen, when things can happen. Lord, we thank you, God, that we call those things that are not seen into the realm that can be seen, God, by your word, God. We thank you, Lord, for the faith that would expand, the faith that would give us that hope, God. And I thank you, Lord, that there is a substance in our faith that it is actually tangible, God, and that we will see things change in our families and in our neighborhoods and in our streets and in our cities and in our nation and in our world, God. I thank you, Lord. It's an ever-expanding kingdom. And I thank you, Lord. We choose today. We say, choose us. We want more of you, God. In Jesus' name, and the church says, Amen. Let it be so according to your word, God. Amen and amen. Well, thank you guys. I'm wrapping it up for the third time. I hope you guys had a good time. I need some water now because I've just, I've just talked myself dry. So we'll see you all later. We'll see you all next time. Oh, and I hope, I hope Lewis is having a great time. He went down to Tampa, so that's why he wasn't with us today. So anyway, I got to have this great privilege to be with you guys. Thanks again, guys.